Hello, everybody. Good to see you. We're back, just like we promised. And as we promised last night, we're bringing a couple of beautiful Lauras along with us uh, today. And uh, before introductions, you know, I wanted to sort of... Uh, this is going to be an interesting. This is going to be an interesting show because you know I, I know I know that Laura Worley, she's not very much familiar with us and she doesn't really know um, exactly what it is we do. So it's going to be interesting because we do bridge. We take uh, and utilize uh, things that are taking place in the world, on the world, um, outside the world, and we sort of make it understandable for individuals. We we will bridge the geopolitical and the spiritual or the geopolitical and the cosmic. And Laura Eisenhower has been wonderful in helping us do some of that. We get together people from uh, different genres, different backgrounds, and we come and we sit at one table uh, in the spirit of, of one thing. And that is the great awakening, bringing this world and the human race to where it belongs saving the children um you know all of us believe in the same core beliefs but maybe we do them differently maybe we come from different zones so what we're going to try to do today is we're going to try to understand some of the experiences laura worley has been through and we're going to try to make sense of that in a spiritual realm in a spiritual sense the best we can so without further ado, what I want to do is I want Laura Eisenhower to, to introduce her dear friend to us and let us know all the good stuff about her. Thank you both for being here. You both look lovely. Ah, oh, great to be here with you, Nick and Dylan. And yes, yeah, Laura. Yeah, Laura Worley and I have known each other for a couple of years. We've done a lot of interviews together. and. Ugh, wow she's the author of uh puzzle pieces and um th th that's th there's a second book what the first book what was the name of the first book laura uh puzzle pieces to the cabal mind control and slavery and then the second one is puzzle pieces together so it's like showing the pieces in the first book the second book is putting it all together to help someone remove oh. like the mind control so Right. So everybody, Laura Worley is a speaker. She's a trainer, a coach, an author. She has successfully helped thousands of people around the world address issues stemming from complex trauma and ritual abuse. And her goal is to train an army of professionals and survivors on how to use powerful techniques that lead them to freedom. So we we come together and talk. Um, and you kind of update me on things that you find out. Um, and I know we talked sort of recently about some things and we were going to come together and do a show about it when you felt the timing was right. Cause sometimes it's time sensitive or it's not like you don't feel like you can share certain things. Um, but because you guys are just meeting her for the first time and maybe wanting to get to know her a little bit more, um, you could ask some questions, but absolutely it's, it's it's hard to know where to begin <laughs> well, i know because you know everything <laughs> they don't I, i'll be honest you don't have to know laura you know this is like 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 dylan and i it's really important for us to all just be comfortable and just sit around and chat you know this okay. this is not a performance you know this is not a yeah you know we're not we're not doing a dog and pony show for for people uh, you know they'll come to this show um for for that very thing and laura um Laura Worley, I, I, I mean, I'll start that I, I watched, um, I watched your most recent video, I think you put out a few days ago, um, um, you know, it, it, and you explained basically the details of MK Ultra, And, you know, uh, I, I, I knew a great deal about it prior, but I certainly didn't know any of your personal experience. Um, and, you know, I found all of it very, very interesting. And, uh, you know, we, we, the people who do the research, the historians like Dylan and I are, uh, and Laura Eisenhower, I mean, we, uh, we, we, we unfortunately know a great deal about what goes on 
But what we don't know so much is is how it affects individuals, how exactly it works, how it feels, you know, in your mind from day to day. I mean, I'm sure you have good days, medium days and bad days, you know. Um, so I wanted to open up the, the, the question, if I could, is, you know, how would you describe to to viewers who may or may not even be aware of um, of this scenario? How would you describe what it's like to you, what it feels like to you and or your clients? Maybe you can, you know, start us open there. Uh, the feelings of MKUltra to being under mind control. Is that kind of what Correct. you're asking? Correct. Correct. Okay. Well, um, it took me basically, I don't know, a 30 year journey to figure out how to undo what the military and all of the groups that you can think of did to me for mind control. The thing that I spent most of my time is I thought if you went after the stories of what they do, most people think it's the Disney stories or these little pieces. If you go after that, then you'll get free. And what I found, it was much later, is that is not the case. If you have the programming that they do to every single survivor that is in any satanic cult group, uh, if you don't get the core foundation programming, they will always be able to activate you. And unfortunately, that's what happened. So I'm not really getting into the whole story, but MKUltra is being under my control. And they create, they purposely torture you until you split, which means they, your mind will create a part to do what they need to do to get through whatever they're torturing you with. And so they purposely know how to torture a person right to the point that the person's mind will split itself. And that this part over here is what they create to do whatever job they want. Most of it'll be sexual. I mean, there's gonna be a whole bunch of things, but you know, it's super soldier. Or it's, it's creating what they want in a person through mind control. And it's against the person's free will. They would never ever choose to do it. They would never do it on their own. But if that person splits their mind, it's like that part's not them. And that part doesn't know anything except what they told them. So it's like when they make a split, like a part or an altar, that altar is like a clean slate. And that's what they start their programming. They start putting in their stories. They start putting in their spiritual uh, dimensions of following Lucifer. Most people don't know that there's a whole, there's like many dimensions of, in spiritual ways that the survivor has also of being programmed to follow Lucifer. And so each, each part will have a different job, but their whole goal of all mind control is to get the person to be loyal to Lucifer. So at the end of whenever they get their new world order, everybody will be under mind control or they will choose Lucifer. Uh, that's what we're up against. And most people think, well, when they talk about MK Ultra, they talk about the torture, you know, the experiments. That's only the top level stuff. That's only the, the thing they want everybody to, you know, if you're going to find out about it, they don't care if you find out about that because that's not the true programming that's taking place. So it took me a real long time to figure that out. So in regards to what, what is, what is it like for you? What has it been like on a day-to-day -day basis? I'm trying to, I'm trying to okay. get a perspective from your own, like, for instance, are you like everybody else 99% of the time or, 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 or do you have, Oh, do I, I feel unusual or, Oh, I feel, you know, I have something coming in or, or do you not know and go off and, and, and split and then you're somewhere and you come back and you don't remember. I mean, how okay. is it inside your own skin with this? Okay. Well, first of all, I need, need to explain that I don't have that anymore. I don't do those things under mind control anymore. Right. So, but I can share what it felt like and with my clients. Um, yes. I have a lot of clients. Well, all my clients are, you know, SRA or, you know, and the things that are done to them would blow your mind and much heavier than I even went through. But if you're under mind control, it's like you don't know why you feel like crap. 
you don't know why you're waking up with bruises all over. Uh, you don't know why you feel like you've been run over by a truck. Um, you wake up in the morning and you feel like literally you've been run over by a truck. And that's because you've been had your, the shit beat out of you pretty much uh, just the night before. The torture they, they do is in the night. So if somebody is, you know, when you have to go to the base or you have to go to the rituals, it's always in the night. So you, you figure maybe 12, one, and you go to wherever you're supposed to be back at your house by six, seven, usually six. Um, you, there's a big thing with all survivors at 3 AM. Um, so even if you can't be at a ritual, they have built inside of you that you can, uh, astro project to be at that ritual because, uh, people are not allowed to not go. So the astro projecting is a, a skill they teach to you very young. Uh, you will learn how to remote review very young. That's why I'm kind of against it because most of the time when remote reviewing happens, it happens without permission. And if you do anything without permission, you've invited a demon. So, uh, so anyway, I don't want to get into that because I know everybody has their views, but that is what we were taught to do very young. So how often does one physically have to go out of their house and go to strange places how often does that take place everything's around the moon so you know they have their i mean the moon is everything to sra survivors like uh you have to be at certain events the moon is everything and there are certain you know calendar years that they're going to do certain things uh, some of the biggest things that they've just done is uh, whenever they want to bring in an, an, an event that they need the demons help, they'll do a big ritual. And what they do is they call in the heaviest of demons, which is the highest authority to come in and help and bring in whatever they want. Um, so they, when they want something to happen, they will always do that. And so the higher up you in, are in the cult groups and the darker you are, that means that you're you're carrying quite a bit of darkness, then you have the power to call in the darkest of demons. So that's what happens. The people high up will call in the highest up demons, and the deep the highest up demons will only obey those who are the darkest. Uh, like I know this sounds stupid, but this is the way it is. Is like say you're here, right? And you just kind of the peewee. Well, the peewee in the group can't call in a high up demon. They don't have the ability to, and they couldn't withstand the darkness. So the person's programming starts in the womb. And by 17, you have the programming. It's like you're going to school. It's in solid. Two more years, I call it college. They finish up some stuff. That is in you hardcore in all the years that you have to be trained and just like a child. And that's what they do. So the programming is, is really, you pretty much are, you have no choice. You have to say, you know, you're loyal, right? They, they torture you to say you're loyal, but uh, they consider free will is when you're 13 and they have a big ritual and the ritual, this is where they say it's the, uh, the event of your becoming an adult and you're using your free will. Okay. So I'll tell you about this event. It's huge in a survivor's life. First of all, they drug you. Okay. So that there's your free will gone. Then they have you raped by 13 people. And the person, of course, is 13 and is angry as hell, right? And then they use this anger to do this other part of a ritual to kill itself off, you know, and they do a lot of things with betraying people with Jesus. And they, you know, they set them up like Jesus will save you. And then they do this horrible thing so that the parts inside believe Jesus will never help them. So anyway, it's a long story. Um, so these events are very coordinated and they're, they're a template. So if you're in Australia, Australia, let's say, and I'm over in America, you're still getting the same template because they have to have an organized way of, of programming people. And if a programmer dies, they have to be able to say like, okay, that person's only five years old. Okay. I know what you need for your programming. So that's why it's so organized. It has to be organized for them to pull this off. Uh, we're talking millions and like, I don't know if this is true, but at least 20 million in the U S under MK ultra. I don't know what it is in the whole world. Amanda by said it's a hundred million, uh, that are under my control. I don't know. 
but it doesn't matter. That's way too much. Did uh, Do you have any idea where those, you know, those figures may have come from? I can't imagine the, the cabal would be very wanting to share I that. I mean, just out of curiosity. No, it's just people that, you know, are in the business to helping people. And so I don't know, you know, but, but we you know this. millions. L let me ask you this. In your estimation, and, and this would definitely be an estimation, do you think, uh oh, alarm, do you think that, let's just, okay, let's just take the 10 million. Do you think that most of them are, are very well aware or are most of them not aware of what they've been through so far? Most of them do not know what they've been through. I just did a podcast last night. And it's, it's a difficult one to do because it's based on the families being programmed and mm -hmm. people, people never talk about the family. They just talk about the survivor. But if a survivor has a family, the whole family's programmed most of the time, this is all I can tell you through my clients. And so I don't want to you know discount anybody's experience, but most of the time, the parents are under my control. And the children are under mind control. They cannot, the cult cannot allow anyone in a family to be awake. Because if they do, they could tell. That's the number one rule. You cannot tell ever. So the whole family will be under mind control. Most of the time, the parents are pretty young when they have the children. And they're definitely under mind control. If at some time later on in their years, do they become awake and choose it? I think it's possible that that definitely happens. I know there are some people that are consciously awake, they're choosing this and they give their children to be harmed. But most of the people I have found that's not the case. Most of the parents are, I mean, yes, the survivors are still pissed at their parents. It doesn't matter if they're under my control, uh, but they are under my control. So um, very few people will choose this with their free will. I mean, very few. And, and this is in like every, town community city these yep. things are happening so yep. people are sitting next to students yes or, or other classmates that might have participated in a ritual or been taken yeah and and that child that is in that class would not be able to say anything and just be and they would probably and isn't not there sometimes know. participants that are like the police and others that are in the community that are a part of it most universities are part of they they really started the MK Ultra in 1953. They were participants with MK Ultra, the military doing this. So all the universities still do all that. But yeah, it'll probably be your neighbors, your you know everybody you know, in some form or fashion, your neighbors. The right under church, there's going to be there's going to be mind control people. There just is, and I, I usually can sense them just because I have the stuff, but um it, it's a real problem it is but most people don't remember that's the problem that's how they get away with it uh because most people are just a mess they don't know why but do they want to weaponize yeah, well. them though to go after certain people is that where this is heading like where is where is this all going you know well like every single person under my control it will have a soldier and super soldier it they will be a super soldier pretty much i think a real super soldier that's all the training they get they might be a little bit but every survivor will act like they will have martial arts uh they will be very skilled in guns they will be skilled in every weaponry hunting hunted uh they've been through hell to become a soldier and that starts when they're a little child uh, and that training never really stops. So uh, does that person know, like, if per, let's just say, I, I can say it for me. Um, I, if I were, was under a mind control state, I could go shoot something perfectly. But if I go by myself right now, consciously aware, I, I'm not a good, I'm not a good shooter. I have no idea how to do martial arts. And, but see, that's what they do. They create everything inside of you, but you can never, ever get it and access it until they need it for themselves. So like I, as a child, knew four or five languages. I cannot access those. I know that I was taught every skill you can imagine, you know, how to have a photographic memory. I do not have that, but I had it when I was young because I had to uh, be a messenger and I had to have a photographic memory to do it. Uh, but that's not something I can access. So 
that's the way most, unfortunately, most people are that are under mind control. They don't remember. They just do not remember what happened to them. And, and the government, the military has um, technology that they can wipe your mind pretty good right now. Um, the way that they're programming the kids today and the young kids, teenagers, is um, they have a technology. They just use these virtual realities. And so let's say that when I was growing up, they they would do it physically to me. Okay, so that would be that I, you know, I would feel all that sometimes. I mean, they pretty much know how to hide the bruises, but now all they have to do is put a virtual reality on somebody. And instead of just being able to do one thing to them, they can cut off their legs, their head, their, you know, they can, be, they can kill them 20 times. And to the unconscious of somebody's being under mind control with drugs uh, and torture, they really think this happened to them. So it, it's, it's even better than doing something to someone really in real time. So that's what's happening to a lot of the younger survivors. Uh, it's not impossible to get them free, but you know, they're, they're, they're making it hard because they have technology guys. This is, this was just told to me by a survivor that, okay, this is what happened to this person. She was beat up. She was, they did horrible things to her. And then they, when they were done, with the programming, they use this technology that came in and completely healed her. She had nothing. They cut her on her neck, not enough to kill her, but pretty much to, so she couldn't breathe. They took everything they did to her. The technology was used and they couldn't. You, you couldn't see it. Nothing was wrong. That's what our military is doing, just to let you know. And that's just the, the bare minimum of what they're doing. If you guys knew what I knew just working with clients, you you would just, you'd be in shock what our military is doing. Uh, it's so beyond anybody's imagination. And it just gets worse and worse. Well, so they're doing um, these torturous things. Since and, I was a kid. and then you, the yeah, technology. There's... Go ahead, Laura. Oh, sorry. sorry. Oh, no. So they're just doing these injuries and and then to have the technology just heal it that's what that's what is she it said i i uh -huh. what is the per well i mean I, if you yeah. think they're 50 yards ahead of us or 50 years then they do have a lot of technology we're not aware of uh that's just for them right of healing and kind of things but they're pretty good at hiding anyway even if they didn't have the technology they make sure they hide what they do because they can't have somebody walking around black and blue everywhere and you know cut up and i mean they they know how to hide things when they're programming and torturing yeah. it sounds like it sounds very much like um the, the depiction of uh if you guys have seen the, the the series altered carbon where they load they load the consciousness of somebody into a simulation and then they can torture them in the simulation now the mind once it's in that simulation cannot cannot ascertain the difference between reality and the simulation so they can do what you explained as you know dismember their body basically work their way from the toes to the head to get information they don't get the information they reload they go again and the mind just it just to just to break the mind so i assume yeah. it's i assume that's some form of disclosure of what you what you're discussing now yeah. exactly yeah it's the, it's the exactly. similar the similar with the rem clones yeah, I've been doing clone research for ages. You know, okay. that's um, that's that's exactly what they do in the in the uh, the REM clones. They have technologies where they're able to load a portion of your consciousness when the mind, when the human is in REM sleep, only when it's in deep REM sleep, rapid eye movement, and it's able to transfer your consciousness into an actual physical body of a clone. Um, yeah. it, 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 you know, it's similar to MK, but in MK, you, you know, you just use your normal body, whereas the clone, uh, and they, they multiply, you know, they kill your clones many, many times over. Um, yeah, and, you know, and the thing about that is you have to retain your memory. Um, they can keep the memory from you, or they can give you the memory that you have to live with as a torture. So, okay, yes. well, let, let's, let's move Let's move, well, move can I say something to that real quick? Absolutely. Okay. I would like to testify of what you just said is the truth because I have worked with so many MKUltra survivors 
And we are finding, to my dismay, that they all have clones. So it is mm. my belief they have made clones of every single MK Ultra because they get their DNA, they get everything they need. And anyway, we'll get into that some other time. But anyway, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's very complex. And, you know, the technology, I mean, we're not talking 50, 100 years. We're talking close to 1,000 years advanced. Um, you know, that's part of our specialty. Dylan, myself, Laura, uh, is the is the cosmic uh, spiritual connections, you know, the, the, the things that go on um, with Solar Warden, the things that are going on in the secret space program since the 30s, um, you know, we're very well aware of of the things that they're capable of that 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 far exceed anything here done with humans. I mean, we're talking about some serious stuff. So okay. let's talk about here and now. Let's talk about what's important, and that is that is fixing the individuals, helping people, uh, giving people the information, and, and not just the information, but the the state of mind. Um, the peace, the love that they need to even begin healing, okay? And, you know, Laura, you were mentioning a lot about, you know, uh, you know, they do this and they do that. And, you know, mm -hmm. okay, so w when you normally say they, are, are we talking about specific handlers? What is the, what is the lowest rung on this totem pole of individuals who can, control a victim you know what would be the lowest societal rung you know like you know what i'm trying to say who are these people that are pulling the strings and pushing the buttons to some of your clients or your past clients say well pretty much everyone i don't know why god does, does this to me constantly but he sends me people that are completely at the top of this inkale threat satanic illuminati freemason the very at the very top so i get constant attacks okay from the groups from demons constantly but that's what that's what i'm working with so i personally i, I don't even work with anybody that is that is just let's just say a local satanic group usually though mm -hmm. they're all involved together as one um when I say they, I really am talking about like the military and the Freemasons, the Illuminati, you know, they're the ones pulling the strings. Um, we we all know that there's a hierarchy, uh, but, you know, they work so organized and they use demonic power to achieve anything. And that is even military. They use witchcraft because they know when mm -hmm. they do the programming and attach the demons it makes it stay longer and work so it isn't just about the torture they're completely into the free the freemason have if you even know about this uh, about the ancient religion that they believe in it's a very old ancient religion and so what they did is they built this template off their ancient religion their ancient beliefs and so Kabbalah it's you know they stole that mysticism and, and turned that over but that's how the template begins but it's all a spiritual thing and it all is to make a a, a, a victim I'm gonna say a victim this time a victim work their way through these different dimensions of evil to get to Lucifer that that's supposed to be the goal and the honor and that he promises a paradise so you, when it, when when a person comes in and they say they have this they usually just remember that they've been tortured, they've been raped, they've been drugged. That's what they remember. Hardly anybody remembers the deep stuff. It takes a little time to get into mm -hmm. that. So that's what my goal is, is God, is, I've been on a long journey of healing modalities. What would work? What didn't work? Because I spent 20 years like in the 90s and early 2000s. Everybody said they didn't believe me that, you know, this doesn't exist you know, there's no such things as cults, you know, of course the military would never do any of these things. So to be able to talk about it now is like amazing. So I'm very excited well, about that part. I mean, the, the good news is this, um, the, 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 the top, the top several echelons of these groups are gone. Um, I mean, you know, I, we do a great deal of studying, you know, I, I, I corroborate with probably two or three dozen of the top truthers with the intel from the Pentagon, MI6, MI5, 
um, in, you know, in other in other facets. Uh, I mean, a, a good portion of these groups were in the process of being gone prior to COVID. Um, you know, we, we had a very good handle on some of the militaries and some of the government structures around the world um, when Q started speaking in 2017, six years ago. So like, you know, in the hierarchies, I mean, the hierarchies are, you know, there are very, very many layers of the onion, you know, all the way from uh, the archons, you know, the, the demonics, the, you know, Lucifer, you know, that, that very pinnacle group, which is involved with the, you know, the reptilians, um, the Draco, uh, the Draco reptilians and different factions of the tall grays. Um, you know, there were three different species that were highly involved in, in this. We did, basically they're all, they're all kind of Orion, um, Orion group. So, I mean, that's sort of the pinnacle. Then from there you go down to Phoenician families, you know, the, the group of 300, you know, the, the, the people that nobody has ever really seen, they live underground, um, you know, they, they, they have cities under there. They don't come up here. And, and some of them are hybrided, hybridized with some of the ancient aliens, you know, uh, as far as people we've ever seen, you know, the, the probably the highest groups are the royals, the pope, the black pope. Um, some of the very, very top Freemasons, the very top uh, Illuminati, Kazarian Mafia. You know, most of these factions do not exist. Um, then you go to the, the 13 world families, you know, the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, the Warbirds, you know, all of these groups. And, and, and you can even include like the Soros's and the Bill Gates. They're all gone, too. Um, most of the militaries are relatively clean. Um, we've been cleaning dumbs now for, I don't know, Laura, what, 10 years? I mean, six, eight, 10 years they started. Um, there are some, probably some, a few that are still remaining, but most of the technology has gone. The dumbs are wiped out. Um, you know, the good news is almost all of these higher echelon uh, controlling factions are at, be at worst neutralized. And you feel the, the, the ones that, that are not are more so on the run than trying to sit around and cause trouble out in the open. Well, I Go the ahead. one thing I'm going to disagree with you about is I have to, because I know for absolute fact, because I work with survivors, they are being taken back to military bases right now. And the energy weapons are being hurt. Many I have people call me, email me. Uh, clients, I have had them shoot energy weapons at me when I speak out against the CIA. Um, they so they haven't stopped, and um, they haven't stopped hurting all these people. So that's not true. And there's another very big thing, and I'm I hope I'm only going by my experience. Is this happened at May, uh, Memorial Day? Um, we have someone like you explained about the clones a little bit. Um, the clones, basically, she was connected to the clone who was there um, at a place. And anyway, she was a witness to um, like there were thousand, at least a thousand clones at the military base in Virginia. And uh, they OK, how I always have to preference everything, if it's OK, because I have to keep everybody safe. I just say everything's from past clients, from professionals from survivors from all over the world and professionals all over the world. That way I can't be too direct of where I'm getting this because I don't want anybody hurt, including myself. Um, so, so anyway, what was witnessed, and there's three confirmations of this, on Memorial Day weekend at a, a military base in Virginia. Um, let's see, let me just ask, should I say this name or not? Maybe I don't need to say the name. Okay, the very top very top people, okay, that are in charge of bringing the new world order in. Uh, I'm not talking about the 300 or any of that. Uh, let's just say his name begins with O, and then you can imagine a few others. Anyway, they were they were there, and they had a really big ritual. 
to try, just like the ritual I tried to explain to you before, is they had a big ritual to call in the demons for the New World Order. And what they did is they, they want to bring in this next event. I'm not saying they're going to be successful. I'm just telling you what they did. We have three confirmations of eyewitnesses uh, at the ritual. So um, what they, this is what Laura was talking about when I had called her and told her, I was pretty upset. Um, it all goes back to my programming when they took me back for the new world order update. Um, they were doing the same stuff. They were saying the same stuff. They said, uh, I don't like to go into dates. So I'm only telling you what was done at the ritual that around Labor Day week, weekend, um, they are going to cause some chaotic event, use some kind of bomb, something to cause chaos. And hopefully I say everything that was done, but I don't know the complete order, but it's going to be a bomb. The people, the soldiers are already into our United States. Uh, they're going to be called up because they've all been given their orders. They just need their, their, you know, orders. Okay. So, so they're going to start chaos too. They are going to shut off as much as they can of the, the food and water. They're going to shut down the grid. They're going to, um, there's one more thing I'm forgetting that's very important. They this is this is in my programming, but I had it just confirmed by someone who's quite uh in the younger category of their programming that the Chinese is going to uh the, I, I'm not saying anything is gonna happen. I'm just saying what their plan is of as Memorial Day of this year, 2023, is that the Chinese are have a part in trying to invade our country. I know you might know stuff, but I'm just telling you what they did at a ritual. And then I need to tell you some no, other I understand. things before you discount it. I understand. It's, okay. Well, what they did, and this is the horrible part. Okay. I hope I'm crying because I always do. Um, they had hundreds of uh, migrant children, hundreds, that they all sacrificed and killed in this ritual. Hundreds. Mm -hmm to bring in this new world order sacrifice and to call in the highest demons again to make this happen everybody says it's not going to happen i pray that's true but nonetheless they are not quitting and my 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 people that that i've seen in my in private you know other practitioners when we hear the stories from their own mouths that they've just been taken back something's happened to them I mean, I don't know. It's real hard to hear when they say the 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 you know the bases are cleared because I mean, I'm hearing this from all all over different states that this is not the case. So it's really hard for me to understand that. Well, uh, I mean, you know, I'll, I'll tell you that, that that it is the case, but is I mean, I would never ever say every single every single person is gone. Every single bet there are a great deal of people that have still that that, that have been affected down the chain of command that are still bad, that are still following prior orders. I mean, we're talking millions and millions. The, 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 the head is cut off the snake, but the snake is still every bit wiggling around. And people okay, are good. still- I just every, wanted that to be said, okay. But when we're talking about like, you know, the, the, the Southern border, it's part of the plan. It's part of the military's orders to, to, to have people still think that this is a, a sieve, but it isn't. Go down there, travel the entire distance. There are no holes, but are there still some coming through? Absolutely. Are there still some clones still walking around? Absolutely. But you're talking about a difference between say a million and a thousand. You know, are there still people in the military that believe in bad things? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All of these things are going to take time, but, but, but what we have to do is we have got to try to remove some of this fear and this terror that, that all of this stuff is going to happen and it's still happening. Look, the Chinese well, it is have been still happening. I don't care what you say. It's still happening. I have witnesses. I do. I and I, I absolutely I, know for myself because I they. Send, I mean, they send Laura, frequencies to me all of the time, and so I know for a fact they're still using DARP or HARP or whatever it is. They're they're doing this to millions that they want to use the energy weapons. 
against us if we don't comply, if they ever get that far. I mean, everybody says no, but I mean, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I just wanted to see it for myself because what I see is not that. I hear those stories, but, but I don't see it. I just, but I just said, I just admitted that you're correct, that there are still bad factions. And yes, there are still um, people with some access to the harp weapons. And of course, they still have people that have access to some of the direct energy weapons. And people like yourself and your clients who are very susceptible to this stuff, they'll be the first to know it. You're absolutely right. But, but my point is we, we, as truthers, we have got to try to start removing some of the fear in order to reach the people, in order to the, for them to start being able to heal rather than being, being so much in in fear and in trauma. That, that's all I'm saying. I'm trying to give people who are listening hope, you know, the, yeah. the, the, the victims, your victims that look, even though this stuff isn't gone, gone, it is on the way out. It is slowly being reduced. It is not increasing. It is being reduced. China is working with us. They have been for a while. The movie says it isn't. Xi Jinping is part of the White Hats. The CCP has been, been defunct for a year and a half. You know, a lot of the things that we know cannot be proven. The reason being is the movie has to play out. It has to be shown in a linear fashion, okay? And I believe every single thing you're saying, or every single thing, but that's all I'm saying. On this show, Dylan and I, we try our very hardest to take some of the horrors from life right now and sort of shine a bigger picture on it and say, look, yes, you've suffered. And many people are dead. Many people took the vax. We all know it's poison. They're gone, right? Yeah. But we try to explain that very much could have been their sole mission. They could have used this lifetime, this existence, as a martyr to enable the rest of us to survive by giving their life, their soul gave this life, this body, enable, to enable the great awakening to be more successful and that's a positive thing even though it's very difficult to look at from this level but i absolutely appreciate and believe everything that you're saying so i, I well, don't want you to I, think that I'll, i don't oh no 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 um i i too am trying to tell survivors that that you are not weak you are powerful and strong and you and i and the, what my goal is, is to make all the survivors have a network over the world that we come together in our power and strength and our knowledge against them, because there's nobody on this earth that knows more about them than the ones that, that have lived with them, you know, our whole lives and been hurt by them. And my whole life was with the politicians and the governors and Kissinger and Nixon and all of them. So I know all of them. I know what they're doing. I know what they say when they say it. And, and there's a whole bunch of, of MK Ultra survivors or just survivors all over the world that that if we stop, I, I've, told, I've told them in my seminars and I'm trying to get this message, do not be a victim anymore. You are powerful and you have knowledge. And that's why I'm trying to show them how to remove all the programming so they can go against the people and, and, and not a way to like, we're gonna go kill them or anything, but that we're gonna bring them down because we could do it because we know them, we know their tricks, we know when they say something out loud in public, what are they really saying? So uh, that's my goal. And, and my goal is to also help therapists become aware of how to help a survivor, because believe it or not, most professionals do not know how to help a survivor of satanic ritual abuse, MK or any of it. And that's the biggest reason why a lot of people do not get free because they usually go in for help and come out even worse. So uh -huh. that's my mission is I believe we're so powerful. We can help. We can make the change that we're, we, that you're just, you know, that you're seeing. Um, I think we all have a part in this, in this 
thing that's going on right now. And we all have a mission, whatever that is, to do our part in this. And, and so that's mine. It's kind of just encourage people, teach them how to get free because I learned the hard way. Uh, so I don't want people to have to spend their whole life trying to get help because I think that's ridiculous. But anyway. No, so you're, you couldn't get more <laughs> right. You don't want to go to the, to down to the doctor or go. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. I, I, I fully, fully, fully believe you on that because all systems are, have been tainted. Um, Dylan, my, my friend in down under. So, you know, you've been sort of listening, observing it. And this is exactly the way I thought this would go. There's a lot of hurt, a lot of pain, a lot of experience, a lot of fear that is real, a hundred percent real. How does one, how does one transmute that? How does one bridge that and sort of somehow make sense out of this very, very difficult, um, uh, you know, example uh, as we had today, you know, how does one, um, are you, are you yeah, referring yeah, to? Are you referring to let, how let, does one as in the listener or one as in the as the one receiving the trauma? Well, maybe you can do both. Yeah, give <laughs> us a give us a two for one. But yeah, seriously, because it, you know it, it's it's two different. You know, mm. her 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 cust her clients. You know, they have a very physical um, challenge as well as a psychological challenge, mm. but as well a very spiritual challenge um and these procedures are somewhat different from a spiritual sense you know i don't know I, give us some of your magic my friend um uh all i'm hearing is obviously we're aware of the darkness right and the 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 exposure now the exposure of the darkness coming to the forefront is the darkness losing control? Darkness wouldn't be, wouldn't this? We wouldn't be talking about it if we, if if it was no longer in complete control. Obviously, I agree with you guys. There's still dark factions out there doing things. It's going to be that way for some time. Um, but the incoming vibration into this planet and the light that's being um, surrounded, but emanating from the center and obviously from cosmic forces, it's 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 just flooding out. Um, that darkness, that darkness does not belong here. It never did. It came here. Um, it was brought here. Um, this planet does not belong and is not in darkness. But, but the human mind, what, what, what you, uh, what you put in darkness calls you to the darkness. So, if you will, if you, if you are programmed to fight, to look for darkness in many ways, you will only ever find it. And with with the current vibration on this planet. And what we have access to on a cosmic level, we we are given the power to an ability to be able to manifest whatever it is that we like, whatever future, whatever whatever it is that we want to 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 see, um, play out. So if if we are entrenched in 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 that in that, uh, and, I, and I'll go back a little bit here, I believe that much of humanity is a collective, and a lot of this MK Ultra stuff has been fed out into the to the masses so you, we've got billions of people under some form of mk ultra you know that are just mindlessly following um because nobody wants to talk about the fear the hurt the pain we just try and bury it and we just try and go along our day to day they know that that's how they work but a lot of that's boiling to the surface now to be renowned in a new way so that's why we discuss what we discuss um because it's time now for over the next few, out of the, the next few gener um, uh, de decades, for example, to for this all to, to come to light. And and it's painful for a listener. Let's say a listener is listening to us right now, and they've never heard of Infaltra, never heard of it at all. And they're going to be there, there's a certain level of dis cognitive dissonance there that's just they're just going to be confused, denial. It's going to be hard to hear. You know, a lot of us have been through that rabbit hole. The first rabbit hole we go down is in relation to children, in relation to satanic ritual abuse, all that. We go down that rabbit hole and it's like, oh, it's it's not nice. It's not comfortable. But we where we where we come out of that is 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 the most important thing. So so Laura W is 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 allowing that information, in my opinion, to to get out there and especially dealing with dealing with those 
clients of hers and people that have been directly involved with military and with, with um, you know, occult groups and things like that, um, you know, this information is important on a fundamental level to come out. My belief is, my belief is, and I'm with Nick on this, is that we that those factions are diminishing. Um, the, the the attempts in doing what they're doing and the sacrificial rituals that they're doing are almost falling on deaf ears because the incoming light and vibration onto this planet is far outweighing the is far outweighing the 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 fear and control that they are attempting to play out. Or wanting to play out, so the 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 tides turned in my eyes and the way I view things as, as as many of us as well. But it's this is the battle. This is the battle. This is the, the, the cognitive warfare. So um, I, I've said this in many shows in the past. Is in this is my opinion, and Laura W, um, you can you can comment on this as well. Is I believe that. Let's call Earth a sandbox, a sandpit. We're all children in the sandpit. We're all playing. Right? There's been a few bullies in the corner. There's been a few people that have come into the sandpit and rearrange and build their sandcastles and then also also uh, manipulate the people playing in the sandpit. Now we've got 9 billion people or 8 billion people playing in that sandpit. The best way I can explain it is the bullies, the main bullies have left. They've wiped the sandpit clean and they're allowing the children to play in the way that they always know how to create their reality. And slowly this MK Ultra, this programming will leave and diminish. And you know, we all we're all as humans, we all we all build our reality on a very limit linear way, you know, like problem, reaction, solution, or like reaction to this or reaction to that. But we, we, with the cosmic influx of energy, we actually have more available to us now to create whatever it is that we want. So in that sandpit, if you can imagine that sandpit, we're all just basically co-creating and perpetuating the the past, which we have access to a lot more now. So um, I hope that makes sense. I really do. I sort of went off on a bit of a rant there, guys, but <laughs> no, it makes no, a lot no, of sense. it does. Th thank you, my brother. You always have a really nice way of putting something in a package, and you know, Laura, Laura, Laura E. I would love to hear from you. Maybe, uh, maybe do one of your famous uh, summarizations of this very, very difficult and very important um, sort of <laughs> conversation that we're having. What, what? Tell us your thoughts before we have to go for the day. Yeah. Wow. Well. <laughs> yeah. Lori's been Lori's been getting massaged by me for an hour. So. <laughs> Thank you, Dylan. <laughs> Yeah, I just feel so much in my uh, just just feeling it all, um, and uh, it's a lot. So I know Laura, you know, having so many clients and seeing so much of this still, you know, kind of going on. I would hope you would also experience people that recognize the forces that are coming in to try and, you know, tackle this and 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 change this. Um, I hope you're feeling encouraged about the direction that humanity is going into. Um, I, I I just really see that people are going to begin to turn their attention to those that have established, you know, retreat and healing centers and places that address um, these sort of things when they begin to notice that this is happening. And you've been doing this, Laura, you've been like a leader of this and you've been just a force for this kind of transformation on the planet and i just see that more of this will you know begin to take place um and and it'll flip it around you know it'll flip it around it's been just so inverted and dark for so so long and yeah i just feel like this complete and total transformation happening and you know it's like i that's why i call myself a global alchemist because this is what we're doing. It's like, we're going to turn the lead of this human experience into gold. We're going to turn this all around because God's spirit is stronger than all these dark weapons and mind control. And that's why you are the person that you are, Laura, because of your God source connection. And that's what just guided you 
out of all of this. And um, you've taught me so much about just, I mean, just reinforced and reminded that, you know, that power, <laughs> you know, can, can turn around anyone and everything. And uh, when people are lost in the imposter gods and belief systems that don't reach that true source, they might still be operating under that mind control. They might still be um, unable to break free, but every soul is on their journey to have an eventual moment where they might begin to connect like you did and 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 create that bond with the god source to begin to unwind from all of this right and i see that on um for the whole planet you know on every level that you know it's like this it's all um slowly but surely yeah being like deprogrammed it's, it's got its most evil or or like concentrated parts of it and the depths of what you witness and what your clients go through and all that but um it's like and how that wants to just permeate and infiltrate the minds of the whole collective consciousness and pretty much all power structures throughout the world and indoctrination of our children but that even though it's getting so, so bad that the great force of love and awakening is going to override it enough to uh, kind of pull a lot of people from that bifurcation or inverted timeline going in a very, very like dark direction. I mean, what do you see? Like, how do you feel? I mean, like as this more parents and teachers and doctors stand up for truth and notice what's really going on and you know like then there's this whole sound of freedom like trafficking thing but they're not you know and a lot of people are saying oh, they're not even getting close to what we really need to expose but you know we're getting somewhere um i mean are you feeling encouraged at all or like how do you I feel do. Laura, about i think if i didn't have this experience i don't know what i would think but I have noticed that God, I would say at least in the last 10 years has started giving healing modalities to people to heal, just heal in general. And in the last three years, this is what I've noticed because I never really included God in my sessions that much. You know, I didn't do too much of that. And then when I started working with survivors, I had to because we were, you know, we I, I always every day have to cast out demons because they're always attached. But what I want to share with you guys is this a miracle. Every single day I see a miracle because Jesus shows up and he heals them quicker than I've ever seen ever happen before. Almost impossible. He is pulling their minds back together so quick. I witness this stuff every day. Something that is miraculous that, that we call, like we do our part, right? We do our work. We find out what happened, what was the programming. And then when it's time to ask Jesus to help doing the healing and removing, he shows up every single time. And people who have lived in the darkness, who know no connection to God, nothing to light. When they, when you see them come a little bit at a time and their whole, everything changes and they become this new person and they're healing and their minds are coming together. That is positive. I believe personally, I might tell you the bad things, but I do believe God is going to step in and help us do whatever. Like there's going to have to be something big to kind of make the change happen, I think. But um, I do feel like he's helping us. He wouldn't bring all this information out to everyone at this time if he wasn't going to help us. Don't you think? I don't know. I just don't see yeah. we'd have all this knowledge for no reason. For sure. Absolutely. For sure. And, and cosmically speaking, you know, Laura, Dylan, you guys both know, um, you know, that this is the end of the 75,000 year cycle. We are in the place, the part of the universe that all of this was written about in, in 47 different uh, languages and in and, 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 and ancient text. This is what 70 plus um, different beings from different places in the universe have been waiting for. I mean, this is a culmination of a countless number of things all happening at the same time. It's why the Aztec calendar ended, the Mayan calendar ended. All of this 
has been written about. All of this has been what's been waited for. This is the end of the reign of darkness on this planet. This is the beginning of the reign of a thousand years of peace. All right. This right here, right where we are right now. And I wanted to, I want to say how brave that, well, both Laura's good Lord. I mean, both Laura's on this screen have been through a lifetime uh, of abuse in every possible way, every way you can even think of. And look, they're right here facing the pain, facing the fear, facing, you know, they've not only all of that, they've, they, they've faced ridicule for how many years people don't believe this. Oh, that, and then, oh, it's your fault. It's yeah. guys. I just want to let them know how proud and how impressed I am with their strength, with their tenacity and with their desire to help others in the face of all that they have gone through. It's absolutely amazing. And I take my hat off to them. Um, I can't wait to do more work with them, projects in the future, when things are ready. And they're very, very close to being ready for us to rebuild this world, for the med beds to come out and help and heal these people, okay? But in the meantime, we do this. This is what we do. So, um, Laura Worley, I'd love for you to tell others, how do we reach you? How do we get healed? If, if some of our listeners, you know, think they have issues, how can they get a hold of you? Uh, probably the best way is uh, laurajworley.com. And um, I'm just telling everybody this because they have shadow banned me in every place. So it's really hard to say, hey, I have a new podcast, but I do. It's on Monday nights. And I'm just going to talk about certain things. And then I'm going to invite people. And Laura's coming next week. And I was just thinking the, the topic that we're actually going to talk about is clones and AI. And maybe you guys should come too. And because that is actually the topic uh, for next Monday, but it's Monday at five. Uh, well, excuse me, seven Eastern Standard Time. And any MK Ultra or SRA survivor, the best way that I could help you is to just read the books because it has all the information. It's uh, puzzle pieces to my control. I'm just going to show you. Okay. The Cabal of Mind yep. Control. Show us. Okay. Show us on the this screen. Is, I don't know, can you guys see it? This is one. This is number one. It's important to see it because it just has the, it's real plain. I try to make everything real plain for people to understand it easily. Mm -hmm. And then second is the puzzle pieces together. This is how you remove your, pro, your mind control programming. Four or five different modalities on how you can do it. How I do it. I just show it. This is a manual. It's not a book. And it's for anybody, like if you're stressed for money with most survivors are, you find somebody that can help you and you take this stuff out of you. That's how God showed me to write it so that people can help themselves because we can't count on professionals right now, unfortunately. So that's, that will help you just have the basic understanding, but I'm Laura J. Worley everywhere or Laura Worley. So. Well, thank you very much. And it's been such a pleasure to meet you, Laura J. Worley. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. It's always nice yeah. to see you, Laura Eisenhower and Dylan. Uh, in Dylan, closing, Dylan. my friend, is, <laughs> is there anything that you would you would like to close us out on, Dylan? Um, no, no, no. I'm I'm good today. I'm I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good. I'm glad you're good. That's Laura, any tongue. final words, Laura Eisenhower, before we say bye bye. Uh. No, I'm just in the trenches of trying to get my book out. Yay. And uh, man, it's it's taking me through some heavy stuff. <laughs> uh, well, and I it's just amazing. To to oh, yeah. man. Yeah. Well, you know, it's all about all of us and what we're doing. And Laura, it's incredible to be with you. It's always amazing to be with you, Nick and Dylan. I love the bridge. I love what you're all about. And um, just, uh, yeah, my website's cosmicguide.org. And I um, just do all I can to assist people in these crazy times. I do astrology, medical astrology, to help understand, like, what the heck might be going on in your world and how to kind of quit looping in the negative patternings and move in the direction of where 
you're being called to find your soul calling, your purpose, your gifts, your abilities, and to stand in confidence in your truth and, and walk, you know, strong in that power, you know, because the world needs it and we can all switch on each other and inspire each other. And that's what it's all about. And that's what we're Thank all you. about. So. Well, for the viewers, you can find uh, actually three of us on Thursday are going to be with the one and only Simon Parks. Um, Simon from time to time comes out of his, his hibernation up uh, talking to the people in the Pentagon and actually speaks with, speaks with us from time to time. We're going to get some good intel out of him and uh, look for that in a couple of days. So I bid you adieu and thank you for you guys' time. Bye-bye now.